Sometimes, usually after posting a video on my Instagram, I get the question what I think about Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's a fair question. It's a popular console title, but I hang with the PC Master Race crowd. My short answer will be the end of this commentary, but in between we are going for the long answer. To understand where I am coming from with all my opinions on this topic, let me state a few things. My total playtime is 2 days, 21 hours and 16 minutes, with roughly 7 of these being in the Fall of the Ghosts expansion. My favorite weapon is the G36C, but I'm not very accurate with it. My most accurate weapon is the SRS, but that may be because I only fired 32 shots with it. Last but not least, I cosplay Operator Holt, but when I appeared in the Best of Community Cosplay, they choose a very old outfit from about one and a half years back, one that I am a bit ashamed of today, it didn't get much right. Anyhow, we're getting off track, so let us get started. The first thing you do is create your Operator. This is one of the game's highlights, allowing you to equip your Ghost in a wide variety of style and clothing. Everything from a cry or die persona to just another backpacking tourist. Save for the mismatch in colors on some items, the only flaw with this system is that there are not more things to equip, but I think the sponsorship deal they made with 511 Tactical may be the cause of this. In a similar manner, many of the weapons can be extensively customized, and that is also very fun. What is less fun is that first of all you have to hunt for all the weapon parts across the map, and you will soon realize it's just a min-maxing of stats either way. It is a drawback that the developers do not seem to wish to add weapons that are common in South America, instead going for the rule of cool. Sadly, this hurts immersion. The customization really only have two drawbacks, and the first one is that if you're like me and prefer single player, there is no way for you to customize your AI companions, despite the community practically begging you this after prior to release to allow us to do so. The second is that you are forced to carry around a backpack and two weapons, rather like in the division. Unlike the division, weapons and backpacks do not contribute to your overall stats, so being able to carry just one would be welcome. I honestly find it both unreasonable and unrealistic that I am forced to carry two guns. What annoys me is that the second one hanging off the backpack in a way I sincerely doubt real operators do. The story is the usual. The United States feel the need to rem send a revenge mission to make an example of a drug lord, and at the same time remove a coke pipeline to the US. It makes sense in theory. The problem is that despite all the hype around the main character, the game completely fails to make him interesting. Thankfully, this is not the case with many of the minor bosses, some of whom are really interesting story-wise, and have fun missions to boot. The point is that taking down the bad guy feels anticlimactic regardless if you get the good ending or the bad, because there is no actual tension between the ghosts and El Sueno. I have to acknowledge that Ghost Recon Wildlands is a visually stunning game, especially at higher graphical fidelity. Both the visuals and the sound do a great job at capturing the world of Bolivia, or at least how we think it may look. The scenery is also awesome, and it's very rewarding to find the high points and enjoy the view, knowing full well you can go any spot you see. The added bonus is that this really gives full play for the NVIDIA Ansel screenshot tool on PC. The game shows the promise of that technology, and I hope it will be implemented in more titles down the line. The other side of the coin is that the world feels dead. There is minimal interaction with the world itself outside the missions, and most of it consists of what's 
going through places that has far too few citizens to be believable. There are no people that are willing to sell you out to the cartel, or trying to sell you anything, or doing any of the stuff people in a real world might do. At the most, they run if you point your weapons at them, and sometimes they can point out where the cartel is, but we never feel an urge to shoot them or an incentive to help them out. Aside from the civilians, we have the two major antagonists of Bolivia, the Santa Blanca Drug Cartel and the Unidad Special Forces. Both are littered around the map in both outposts, bases and patrols, and will be your main opposition. The Santa Blanca are the thugs of the operation and carry out the dirty work for their bosses, and will be your most common targets. If you wish to get a particularly good weapon or helicopter, or are just starting enough of a commotion, you will have to deal with Unidad, who can bring serious firepower to bear on you from armored SUVs to attack helicopters. To help with this, you have the help of three AI companions named Holt, Weaver and Midas. They will follow you around, make snarky comments, and man the guns of helicopters and cars. Aside from the sync shot ability, this is the limit of their usefulness. This clear limitation creates a problem against the more dangerous foes, especially those who are inside houses, and while they can survive, it is foolhardy to expect them to hold a flank for you, because the enemy will simply ignore them in order to get to you. As for the enemy, the only threat they usually pose is pure strength of numbers, even on higher difficulties. Unfortunately, the game developers are aware of this and make sure that many of the difficult missions simply mean an unrealistic number of enemies teleport in thereby to engage you without you having any ability to sneak past or evade them. To deal with them, your rebel support options, a mortar strike, distraction team, uh, a vehicle drop or just a team of rebels in an armed car are sometimes the more useful options. It is clear that the entire game is geared towards co-op with single player taking a clear back seat to the multiplayer experience. The problem with this is that either you have a group of dedicated friends to play with you, or you play with randoms. While co-op is a lot of fun, it is not the way I would play the story mode, uh, since players very seldomly choose to stick to a single plotline or even the same playstyles. Communication are usually also at a down low, meaning you can start a stealth approach just for some ass with a machine gun and sniper rifle to go loud when you're in the middle of the bad guys. Now, I have the pleasure of reviewing this game a few months after launch, so I can also take in all the bug fixing, the new, rather good, system for piloting helicopters, and the added content into account, so I thought I'd mention a few things on this. The new tier 1 mode is simply a mess. While it provides new rewards and a new way to play the game, the main feeling is that the difficulty is increased mainly due to laser accuracy and bullet sponge enemies. This is not how you make a game more difficult, all it makes is the game more frustrating. Uh, Fallen Ghosts is so far a pretty decent experience, pretty much in line with the original campaign. It is not the dark survival experience that I feel was advertised, but it is at least an interesting continuation of the story. My only complaints are that the armor archetype is a cheap solution, and when not even multiple headshots is enough to take one down, somebody messed up. On the other hand, the jammer archetype really mixes things up and removes many of the tools you feel reliant upon. I would also like to have the full range of weapons available to me in Falling Ghosts, instead of the limited options I have right now. Vice versa, I would like the Falling Ghost weapons to be available in the main campaign. I have not tried Narco Roads, mainly because I feel this is too far a divergence from what I would like my Ghost Recon to be, so I refuse to try it. 
the entire premise is so disconnected from what the game should be all about, and the execution seems awfully flawed. Ghost Recon is not the crew! The DLC items you can buy in the store are also a huge problem. Instead of getting new customizable weapons, real-life military gear or vehicles, we get... Flower power for moths. Brand guns. Muskets. Facial paints that look like they come right off a fucking soccer game. I mean, what the hell? Do they really think this is what their audience wants? <sighs> I'm not sure why all this happened. Part of me thinks they wanted to compete with Grand Theft Auto. But in my opinion, that is best left to Watch Dogs 2. A solid title that does exactly what it says on the tin and more. Ghost Recon Violence tries, but it falls short. My main problem with Ghost Recon Violence, and the primary reason why I end up being so frustrated with the game, is behind the curtains of what we have, I can see the better game, and it would not take much to bring the game there. Yet the smaller, easy to implement changes never happen, and I can fully understand why they would not like to put the, in the more expensive work for any of the bigger ones. The final score is a 7 out of a 10. It's a diamond in the rough. Hopefully Ubisoft will have listened to the community for the next game in the Lamp franchise. Lamp 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 they are on something here, and I would like to continue down this path and improve upon it.